Hello, YouTube. Well, I was tagged in a video um, by Rachel. Uh, she has a YouTube channel out there. It's Gardening at Dewinsa in Ireland. And actually, I was just looking at one of her videos uh, yesterday while I was at work. And uh, she has daffodils growing in her yard. And it's December, so that's amazing. But anyway, her videos are uh, very professional looking. Uh, really nice light in her videos. Um, she speaks really well, and I'm very nervous in front of the camera. Uh, she has very healthy plants. Uh, she even has lots of orchids, hardy orchids in her garden. It's amazing. So if you don't know about Rachel's channel, um, you should check it out on YouTube. Anyway, she tagged me in a video, um, wanting me to answer some questions about orchids. So here it is. Rachel, this is for you. Um, first question is, how long have you been growing orchids? Um, well, without giving away my age, which really isn't a big deal, um, I started growing orchids in the mid-80s, so it's going on 30 years. Um, what's your first plant? Well, I wish I had some of those plants back then. Uh, my first plant was given to me as a Christmas gift, I believe. Uh, one of the white uh, Phalaenopsis. Um, the moth orchid, typical, just plain white. Fell in love with it, and that's where the obsession grew from there. Uh, started buying more Phalaenopsis than Dendrobiums, and then I had to uh, close the back deck so that I could put my plants out there, and then I ended up having to get a greenhouse to make a long story short. Why do I grow orchids? Um, well, they're beautiful. Why do we grow anything? Uh, it's the, to see the fruits of our labors, it's the challenge. Um, orchids are so diverse. Uh, I used to only be into the, the big showstoppers, and now I like the miniatures as much as the big ones, so. Um, you know, plus they're survivors. They survive in a wide variety of climates and different temperatures, so they're very much a strong and hardy plant. Do I grow anything other than orchids? Hmm. Well, I have a yard, uh, and I try to do my best. I'm not really, the conditions in my yard is not so well. It's hilly, it's clay soil, so other than that, I do have a collection of, uh, succulents that I've been collecting um, that's kind of getting out of control. I usually buy one a year in the spring and it, that collection has really got, gotten out of control. have lots of uh, other things that are in the, the greenhouse as well. Some angel trumpets. Uh, I keep my gardenias and I have uh, lots of jasmines and clematis and not clematis, uh, passion flowers and stuff like that. Um, my favorite genera. I would say I love the Angricoids, although that's a general group. It's not really one specific genera. Um, but I do love the Angri Angricoids. are probably my favorite. I would love to have them all and the hybrids, um, which is impossible because they're so rare. But that's my favorite genera. My five favorite orchids. Um, okay, the question was... Uh, what are my five favorite orchids? First one on my list is this orchid right here, which is no surprise, it's an angricoid. This is angry Aranthes arachnites. And as you can see, it has these long uh, inflorescence, which end in flowers or they can end in kikis. This, these all used to be flowers and they have in turn formed kikis that have roots on their own. And it's a easy to grow plant, it likes it in the intermediate uh, half sun, uh, you know, morning sun, shade in the afternoon, uh, more intermediate temperatures as I said, it likes to be watered throughout the year, a um, little bit of drying rest after it blooms. And it blooms pretty faithfully. Um, so that is number one. Second one on my list is my dendrobium right here, Adora Nishi, which is a cross. And I'm sorry, it's I'm sort of too close to the plant, but it's a cross between 
Spectabile and Alexandria. Yeah, this is. And right now, it is actually putting out spikes. Right there, there's a spike, and there's another couple, and they do bloom off of volcanoes. Um, this really doesn't care for a watering rest uh, in the winter. Um, and as you can see, it is putting out some new growth down here at the bottom. Down here at the bottom, there's a new growth right there. And this other new growth that's up here. So, good plant to have if you can get your hands on it. Like I said, it's Spectabile times Alexandria, and it is fragrant. Ray blooms off of volcanoes. Next plant on my list, it's not much to look at right now, but pretty soon I'm sure it'll be throwing off something, because it generally does towards spring. This is my Maxillaria shunkiana, little black flower that emerges from the bottom of the new growth. Looks kind of shabby right now, but There it is, and there's actually, a, I see a little uh, bud that I just noticed right now. Right there, what a surprise. I might have to repot this pretty soon. Remount it on something, but yeah, there's a flower bud. Holy smokes, never would have known it. Thank you, Rachel. Put that back, that's number three. That one likes intermediate. Um, more shady plant. It's mounted, so it likes to be watered. Um, blooms, like I said, it, it, late winter, early spring. Uh, black, dark, maroon flower. Kind of in the same color tone as that Millennium Magic. That's number three. Number four is um, where did I put it? Well, I'll tell you what it is, is I can't find. I just remounted the one that I have. It's Dendro, uh, Brassavola Cucalata. Um, that is my number four favorite orchid. And it uh, has the typical Brassavola shape. Yeah, I can't find where I put it. I mean, here's a Brassavola, but it's not Cucalata. But anyway, uh, you know, classic, uh, almost uh, heart-shaped. Cucalata has fr uh, frilly lip and is very fragrant at night, white. Sometimes uh, more than one flower to an inflorescent. Uh, but a typical night blooming uh, grass of oil. And my fifth, Sorry for this video, it's, but my fifth plant is right over here next to my Shunkiana and it's my Epidendrum Parkinsonian, it's Parkinsoniana. This plant right here gets blooms that come out from the new growth every year, come out from here. These are the new growths, and it is a white uh, cross-shaped flower that is night fragrant. Another nice plant to have, Parkinsoniana. I have another one that's a little bit, must be a different variety, because this is a little more spindly. That one is, the, the leaves are a lot more of a substance to them. They're more thicker more fleshy but a good good plant to have it likes it drier in the winter uh, copious amounts of water in the spring and summer um, and then in the fall uh, and winter it starts initiating its spikes when uh, where the weather gets cooler and they come from the sheets that are on the plant right in here in here so that's my five Next question is, what is my least favorite orchid? Um, I would probably say the common white file that you can find at any grocery store, Trader Joe's, Sam's, Walmart, Home Depot, 
Uh, that just doesn't interest me. Uh, my How many orchids do I have? Uh, I just counted the other day, actually two days ago, and I have 300. My growing space is a, well, I have a greenhouse and it's probably 65 feet by four feet and um, south facing. So it's open to both sides, east and the west. Um, it typically has been a hot house, although over the years I figured out that there are microclimates within that greenhouse. Um, there are shadier pockets and you just kind of have to figure out uh, the areas that get more temperate temperatures rather than the extreme hot. Um, I do have several humidifiers that are going 24 seven and I have a uh, big heater and some exhaust fans for the summer. He heaters for the winter and exhaust fans in the summer. And fans or ceiling fans are circling all the time generally as well. And that is my growth space. Um, have you lost any special plants? Well, I do remember one sp specific special plant that I lost. Well, I'll say two. Um, one was uh, a path blatulum that I know I spent over a hundred dollars for because it was in bloom and I was very new to orchids and you know I was just overwhelmed by the bloom and you know it sits really close to the leaves and it's spotted purple and it just sits there tilted looking up at you and it's very nice and I know it was over a hundred dollars uh, I'm sure it was some special cross and uh, that sucker died within a month, and I'll never forget that. I also had a pretty nice size uh, Encyclia, well, it's probably not Encyclia anymore, but it used to be Encyclia Prisma Carpa, which I think is one of the most coveted of all orchid plants because of its fragrance, and uh, I do like Encyclias, but I don't think it's an Encyclia right now. I'm not sure what it is called, but I'll just call it Encyclia. Um, that I lost that plant to scale. Um, I, tr I traditionally have a lot of scale going on in my greenhouse. It just it's inevitable, and so it's an ongoing battle. But I lost that uh, mature size, uh, several pseudobulb growth plant, um, Prisma Carpa. So I just now got a little seedling. So I'll have to wait a few years, see if that does anything. Plants on my wish list. Um, hold on, I gotta get the list. <laughs> I think I'm only supposed to limit it to five, so, but I still had to make a list. I mean, you know, we've, my wish list is hundreds. So anyway, my list li wish list is the Selogeny Pandorata. That's number one. I used to have one. It's pretty difficult to grow because it's got the wandering uh, pseudobulbs and you really need to mount them and they're very temperamental and so I still want to get one despite. My second one is a uh, Stanhopia grandiflora. I love Stanhopias. Grandiflora has the pristine, very oversized white um, fragrant. You know, they only last for a few days, but it's beautiful for while it's out. I did have one and it just died on itself. Um, anyhow, my third favorite plant is, uh, no, my wish list, I'm sorry, is uh, Yu Chao Citrina. It used to be in Cyclia. Um, I am going to try to grow that again if I can find it. Typically, it's a more cooler from the Himalayas, I believe, uh, or Nepal grows on the cliff faces there, exposed, um, very temperamental, kind of likes it more dryish in the winter, blooms in the spring, has very fragrant lemony uh, flowers pendant. Um, that's been on my wish list forever. And my last one is Dendrobium johnsonii, which is used to breed so many Latoria dendrobiums, all the crosses, I can't even name them all. Um, pristine white flower, there, are, there is some fragrance occasional Occasionally, it is a Latoria, as I said, uh, foundation of many of the crosses. I just love it. And how many is it? One, two, three, four. Okay, one more. I, I like Dendrobium uh, superbum, which is uh, 
I can only remember seeing a San Francisco Orchid show where they had to carry this plant in on a on a in a wheelbarrow. I mean, it was so huge, um, big fat club shaped canes with with uh, inflorescence of thousands of flowers. Um, I would love to have one of those, although having the space for those are is unrealistic, really. Um, but it's still on my wish list. And I think I answered all the questions. So thanks, Rachel, for challenging me to this uh, video. And everyone, keep growing your orchids.